video is brought to you by Privacy. Stay safe when shopping online with merchant-specific virtual cards that you can close at any time. Use the link in the description below and get $5 just for signing up for your free account. How's it going everyone? This is Mark with AtTech. In this video, I want to show you how you can run iMessage on Android using AirMessage. The purpose of this video is to show you how to get it up and running, get your server working properly, and how to get it also working how it should on your Android device. It's fairly straightforward, but there's a couple of troubleshooting steps you may encounter. So go ahead and talk about that in this video. So the first thing you want to do is go to airmessage.org. I'll have a link to that in the description below, and we'll go to the install page. From there, we'll be able to download the AirMessage server right at the top. And once we do have that downloaded, we'll go ahead and install that on the computer, put that in our applications folder, and get that up and running. Now with AirMessage running, it's going to prompt you to allow full disk access. So I'm going to show you to do that right now. We'll go to security and privacy, and then you'll click on privacy, and then go down to full disk access. Now this thing's going to show up there automatically, but what we'll go ahead and do is unlock our settings here, and then we'll click the plus button, and then we'll go ahead and search for our app in the applications folder. From there, we'll go ahead and lock our settings back up, and we can go back and see what else we need to do. Now we need to go ahead and change our sleep settings. So go to energy saver and we'll change computer sleep to never. Now another important thing is to go into security and privacy and uncheck the box where it says to require the password. This needs to be unchecked, otherwise it will not be able to access your computer if it locks after a certain period of time. Now we need to configure port forwarding. This is going to vary based on how your router handles it. We are using PFSense in the office so it's gonna be a much more complicated and difficult process if you're using PFSense, which is good news because I was able to figure it out. But if you are using a simpler consumer level network, it should be pretty easy. The main thing you need to do is find the IP address of your computer, and then we'll go to the port forwarding rules, and you wanna forward the port that air message uses. In our case, that is port 1352 with a TCP protocol. That's all you really need to know. You want to accept that from the WAN, forward port 1359 to your computer, which should hopefully have a static IP address you want to assign to it. That way it does not change. So now that we've got port forwarding checked, we can go ahead and try it out with can you see me? That's a way of checking that. But next we need to go make a DDNS. This is pretty simple and easy to do. It's free. I prefer to use no IP, so I'll leave a link to that in the description below. But what we want to do is create a host name and that hostname is just going to point to your public IP. It'll automatically fill that in, so you don't need to really know what your public IP is. But there's one more thing we want to do, is to download a dynamic update client. Most DDNS services will have one of these, and the point of this is just to update that hostname with your public IP address, if that does change, because it does change from time to time. Now, I haven't had issues with no IP outside of my network, but when I'm inside my network, I tend to have issues with it not working properly. So I also have a backup one using DYNU. They recommend using DYNU in the instructions. I prefer no IP, because I haven't had a ton of success with DYNU outside of my network, but we'll do the same process, create a DDNS with DYNU, download their software, and run that as well. And then from there, we'll have two DNS forwarding addresses. And now I'll show you how to make sense of all of this madness inside of the app. Okay, so on our Android device, we want to go to the Play Store and search for AirMessage. We'll go ahead and download that. It is actually a real app on the Play Store, which is very surprising. So with AirMessage downloaded on our phone, we'll go ahead and open that up, and it will prompt you with two things, a server address and your password. Now the server address is gonna be our no IP host name that we made. So whatever you name that, you'll enter that in right there. Now one step I didn't talk about is actually inside of preferences of the air message on your Mac, you should probably make a better password than the default one. So go ahead and click next. And if your connection failed to the server, what I recommend doing first is entering in the IP address, the local IP address of your air message server while you're inside of your own network, just to make sure it works. And then if that does, then I would try entering in the DYNU IP address if you are having issues inside your network. Again, try turning Wi-Fi off and using LTE and then use the no IP or your public IP address or the DYNU 
testing those different things until you can log in. And with that done, we can see that we now have text. It shows up as a real message. You can respond to them, reply to them, mark them as read. It works very nicely. And all of the messages show up just as they would on your regular iPhone. They can import and you can see all of that. And it works really nicely. So why do we make two DDNS addresses again? Well, one very cool thing about Air Message is that it has a failover server option. So we have our main server that we logged in with, and there's also a failover option in case the one that you want to use is not working for some reason. This works especially well for me because only one of them seems to work inside of my network, and the other one seems to work on LTE outside of my network. So I have both of them in here, one in the failover option, and that way I can always stay connected. Air message is one of the better ways of using iMessage on your Android that I found. Read receipts work as they should. Uh, footage and media imports properly. There's even support for stickers. They show up as they should. Everything works really nicely. And once you do get it working properly, it's actually really nice. So there you go. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. I'll do my best to answer them. If you like this video, leave a like. And hit the subscribe button for more videos like this. This is Mark with Hat Tech, and I'll see you in the next one.